Everyone take a songbook. We'll sing together. 531, please. 531, all hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Let's stand together to sing. 531, all hail the power. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. now together. Oh, that with yonder sacred throng we have his feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting tongue and crown him Lord of all. We'll join the everlasting tongue and crown him Lord Great singing this morning. Uh, Brother Bob and uh, his wife Tanya and uh, Andy and Nikki were all down at Pensacola, Florida. Uh, their, Bob and Nikki's sister Allison had her senior voice recital there on Thursday night. And uh, ex the family, extended family, I think anybody affiliated with Reed was there. And uh, they had a great time at her <coughs> concert. She did a wonderful job. And they got to spend a couple days there and uh, enjoying day let me know it was 75 degrees and uh, when it was snowing here and about 30 and uh, so hallelujah but they're on their way back and uh, Lord willing they'll be back with us this evening but uh, we'll have to get through it without brother Bob this morning all right so uh, we'll we'll struggle through and uh, you bear with us and uh, the good news is Jesus is here amen, amen. and uh, he's ready to speak to our hearts and we'll look forward to what he has for us this morning let's pray together shall we Father in heaven, we bow before you in prayer. We do ask, Lord, that you'll meet with us this morning. We thank you, Lord, for what we just sang about, that one day, Lord, will sing all hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. What a day that'll be when we get to see that take place in heaven. Lord, my prayer this morning is that Everyone in this room, under the sound of my voice, would know Christ is their Savior. And they'll be there in that day to see him crowned Lord of all. Lord, I pray you'll exalt the Lord Jesus today in our service, both in song and in the preaching of your word. May you be pleased with the service this morning. May you use it in each one of our hearts and lives. And I pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Truly say, is the love of 
Jesus, something wonderful, wonderful, it is wonderful. Oh, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful, wonderful it is to me. Love beyond our human comprehending, a love of God in Christ, how can it be? Love of Calvary. Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Wonderful, it is wonderful. Oh, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Wonderful it is to me. Let's all sing again together. Take your songbook if you would. 311, 311, redeemed, how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. 311. On the first together, redeemed, how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed through His infinite mercy, His child and forever I am, redeemed. By the blood of the Lamb, redeemed, redeemed, his child and forever I am. Redeemed and so happy in Jesus, no language my rapture can tell. I know that the light of his presence with me doth continually dwell. His child and forever I am. On the fourth now together. I know I shall see in his beauty. Who loving me my footsteps and giveth me songs in the night. Great singing this morning. Great. Sound wonderful. All right. A few announcements now for us. Listen carefully, if you will. We'll have our regular schedule of services today. 530 will be our Christian growth class. We meet in the conference room, which is downstairs right across from the nursery. And uh, tonight's lesson is going to be on purity. Purity. Uh, there's a great, great need of purity in our day. And if you're going to be pure and bring up children that are pure, it'll be on purpose. It won't be by accident. And so we'll have some things that'll be helpful for you tonight during the 5.30 class. 6.30 tonight, uh, we'll meet back here in the auditorium for the evening service. And I want to give you tonight, Lord willing, seven uh, principles of life. Seven principles of life. They're from First Peter. I think they'll be a help to us and uh, guiding your life. You ought to live your life by principles. Okay? If you, uh, if you establish some principles... It takes decisions out of the process. Uh, the more decisions you have to make, the more possibility you'll make a wrong decision. And so you want to limit your decisions, and principles will help you do that. And so we'll give you some good principles of life uh, this evening during the evening service, okay? And so we'll have a great time together today. Uh, ladies, uh, your uh, mother, daughter, friend, ladies, luncheon, whatever you want to call it, just be there, uh, is May the 14th, all right? And uh, Mrs. Wendy Burks, who is the wife of Dr. Ben Burks, who's the international director of Reformers Unanimous, will be here. Uh, in fact, Brother Burks and Mrs. Burks will be here for about four days. Uh, he's coming in on that Thursday. Um, the Republican Club of Franklin County is hosting a town hall on the heroin epidemic in Ohio, and uh, Brother Burks is going to be there. Our Reformers Unanimous will be represented there, and uh, he'll be part of that town hall on Thursday night, and then he'll be here at RRU on Friday night. 
the, she will speak Saturday morning. Brother Brooks will go to London to be in the prison out there with the RU program. And then he'll speak to us on Sunday morning as well. And then they'll be flying out Sunday afternoon to get back to Rockford for Sunday evening services. I believe is how it's going to work. So it's going to be a great time together. And so ladies, you see Heather Barham after the service. She'll be down in the lobby. Uh, with the tickets for that. It is limited space, and so make sure you get yours, and uh, don't miss that day. You will enjoy uh, Mrs. Wendy Burke. She's a well-sought-after well speaker nationally, authored several books. She has a new book coming out at the conference this coming week. Uh, with the Reformers Unanimous uh, National Conference is this week over in Rockford, Illinois, and uh, we have about I think 19 of us going to that conference, and uh, so we'll be over there for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, coming back on Saturday. So uh, we appreciate your prayers for us as we go to that this week also. All right. Let's take just a moment now, and we'll welcome any guests we have with us in the service. Anybody here today for the very first time? Put your hand up in the air. Any first-time visitors? I think I've seen some back for uh, a second or third time, but it's uh, good to see you. Good to see you here this morning. Uh, Ricky's mom is here, and uh, glad you made it in. And uh, that's great. And Ricky and Michael got separated this morning, huh? Couldn't couldn't get four together, huh? All right. Well, I guess that's a that's a good problem, I guess. And uh, trying to fit you in together. It's good to see you here this morning. That's great. All right, fellas. Let's take a moment. Then we'll hear from the choir.
Everyone take your songbook. We'll sing again together. 335, Showers of Blessing. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. 335, there shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing. Sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we bleed. On the last now together. Uh, there shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead. And back a few pages to 298, please. 298. Jesus, my Lord, will love me forever. Now I belong to Jesus. Let's all stand together to sing it. And as we start this first stanza, the children fourth grade and under can go to children's church. All right? Follow Brother Brett there. And Jesus, my Lord, will love me forever. Together. And Jesus, my Lord, will love me forever. From him. Power of evil can sever. Ransom my soul, now I belong to him. And now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity once I was lost in sin's degradation from sorrow and shame now I belong to him now I belong to Jesus Jesus belongs to me, not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Go ahead and greet each other this morning. We'll come back and sing the last stanza together.
sing that chorus together now. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Now we're going to sing the last stanza together. Joy floods my soul, for Jesus has saved me. On the last stanza now. Joy floods my soul, for Jesus has saved me. to redeem now I belong to him and now I belong to Jesus Jesus belongs to me not for the years of time alone but for eternity the chorus one more time without the instruments now I belong to Jesus. Sing it. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Everybody said? Great singing. You can be seated. Great singing this morning. Ushers are coming and they'll receive our offering now today. Anybody who's not back in their seat will put $100 in the plate. I think we'll institute that rule here, and uh, that'll get them in their seat sooner. All right. Brother Dave, if you'd put these on low, I think it'd be good, except for that back one, you know, is different. So you have to, don't put that on low. That means high, if that, if that makes sense, all right? Okay. Let's pray, and we'll ask God's blessing on our offering this morning. Brother Wallace, I'd like you to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Father, thank you again. Lord, we are so privileged to be able to come into your house and freely open up your word. Lord, help us to be respectful of that as it's taught. Lord, I would ask that the Holy Spirit go down every aisle, search every heart. Lord, that... Uh, it would be such a way that it would make a difference in each and every one of our lives. Father, bless the offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Take your Bible this morning, if you would, please, and open to Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, please. Brother Taylor, you'll take care of this one when the music comes, okay? Luke 15, we're going to read verses 1 through 10. Verses 1 through 10. I'll begin on 1, you join me on 2, I'll read 3, we'll alternate until we end together on verse 10 of Luke 15. And as our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing, please, to read God's word. And let's begin, uh, I'll begin on verse 1, and then 
you will alternate from there. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house, and seek diligently till she find it. And when she hath found it, she calleth her, na- her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. And let's pray together, shall we? Father, add your blessing, please, to the reading of our scripture here this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the Bible. We thank you, God, for giving us your words that we hold copies of it in our hand this morning. Lord, I thank you for each one who's made their way to church today. We've enjoyed the music, and I pray that it's been a a blessing to you as we've sung with grace in our heart unto our Lord. And now, Father, I pray you'd prepare our hearts that we'd be ready to receive the truth from your word this morning. Lord, we need help. We're a needy people. We, we need our God to speak to us this morning. And so, Lord, minister to each individual as only you can. Bless the special and speak to our hearts and may it prepare our hearts for thy word. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Some men try so hard to prove that God's not really real, while others say they know for sure His love you cannot feel. But I know He's real within my soul, for one day cleansed and made me whole and Jesus is still the answer for that longing deep in your soul Jesus is still the answer and no time and ages roll Jesus is still the answer, he's the answer for your soul. And though some may say he doesn't fit with their philosophy, I know Jesus is still the answer, he's always been and always will be. Some men pretend that the things of this world have brought them peace of mind. But with the dawn of each new day, new thrills they try to find. Not until they meet the Prince of Peace can they ever hope to find release for jesus is still the answer for a world that's seeking for peace jesus is 
still the answer and no time in ages roll jesus is still the answer he's the answer for your soul and though some may say he doesn't fit with their philosophy i know jesus is still the answer he's always been and always will be i know jesus is still the answer he's always been and always will be that's right now father in heaven we bow before you in prayer we thank you lord for the wonderful truth that Jesus is the answer. And Lord, I pray that we will lift him up this morning. You promised and he said if he's lifted up from the earth, he'll draw all men unto him. And my prayer, my desire is that you draw us closer to Christ because we were here in church this morning. Lord, bless the, now the preaching, the teaching of your word, open our understanding. Give each individual what they are seeking from you this morning as we look into your inspired word. Help me as I bring the message and help each one as they listen. May thy will be done in these next few moments. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Luke 15 is the lost and found chapter of the Bible. I don't know if you ever... Uh, most people don't even get a newspaper anymore. Anybody still get a newspaper delivered to your house? How many get a newspaper delivered to your house? One, two, three, four, five, maybe six people out of this room. Isn't that something? And in the in used to have uh, lost and found section in the classifieds, you know, and you'd look in there for lost and found. This this one was in the lost and found. It said lost dog, brown fur, missing some due to mange. Blind in one eye, three legs, slightly arthritic, goes by the name of Lucky. <laughs> There's a, I read this week about a lady, what we would consider maybe a bag lady, and she's in New York City, and she attended a preaching service at the Manhattan Rescue Mission. Afterward, in the line to receive some food, she mentioned to the preacher that she was ready now to give her life to Jesus Christ. And she said, I never knew until the day when you were preaching that my name is in the Bible. And she said, and the preacher said, well, tell me what your name is. And she said, my name is Edith. He said, Edith. He said, my, I'm sorry, I hate to disappoint you, but you are mistaken. I, I know the Bible fairly well and there's no Edith mentioned in the Bible. She goes, oh yes, you read it this morning in your message. And so he opened his Bible like you just did to Luke 15 and, he, and, and she read to him verse number 2. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured saying, this man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. She said, there it is. Right in the Bible and she accepted Christ her Savior. And by the way, Jesus receives Edith and he receives Joe and David and Pete and Sue and uh, the other ones as well. Amen? Three stories make up, I think, really one parable here. Uh, sometimes folks take it as three separate parables, but really it's one truth that we get through all of these that's told by Jesus in Luke 15. Um, the first one is about a lost sheep. And the lost sheep, of course, represents those who are not saved, those who are out into the world and they're not part of the count, okay? When God counts, they're not part of the count, and so they're out in danger, they're exposed, and they're helpless. But thank God, Jesus is the shepherd. And He, the Bible says, He said, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And so the shepherd goes seeking for the lost sheep. And he's looking until he finds it. And then he gets that sheep and 
and he brings the sheep back. He didn't drive the sheep back. He picked the sheep up and put it on his shoulders and he carries the sheep. I news for you. You know, that's how, that's how the Christian life is. It's not you trying harder. It's not you trying to put forth more effort. It's you realizing that if you just rely on Christ, He'll carry you. You know, you've, everybody's seen that poem, Footprints, you know, where they have two footprints and then all of a sudden there's only one and they say, why'd you leave me? And the Lord said, no, they got it all wrong. That's where I carried you. Well, I got news for you. If you're, if you're living the life right, living the Christian life the way you ought to, there's always only one set of footprints. And that's when He's carrying you all the way. Uh, and that's how I know I'm safe until I get to heaven because I'm not holding on to Him. He's holding on to me. Uh, I'm not holding on to His hand. He's got me inside of His hand. Amen? And I'll be safe all the way to glory. And so uh, that, that's the lost sheep. But then He moves on to a woman that had ten coins and she lost a coin in her house. And she begins to look diligently for that coin. That lost coin, that lost silver piece is... Is, is indicative of someone who is saved but lost even inside the church. And, and listen, they're not lost as far as their salvation, but they're lost for service. The, the value of the coin was not that she lost a coin, but she lost the ability to do anything that that coin could do. She could not purchase anything. She could not use it for anything. Any good that could come from that coin could not be done because it could not be found. It was lost to service. It was lost to usefulness. And it's out of the, it was out of the hand of the only one who could use it to do something good with it. And listen, my friend, you can be in church, but first of all, you could be in church and still be lost. And you can be in church and lost certainly to God's usefulness and to God's service. God didn't save you to just sit in a church service and soak up and, and, and take up 18 inches of space. Or more. Okay? God saves us to serve Him. Now, if I have to sit down and do the amen and, and stand up and do the preaching, we'll have a long service this morning, all right? So uh, it helps if I'll do the preaching and you do the amen. And, and so we're not saved. Listen, everybody's saved to serve. You have a job that God desires you to do, and you're to do it for Him. And we do it not to be saved, but we do it because I am saved. There are things I do at home and I do for my wife to show her that I love her and I care for her. Listen, I'm not doing that so I can be married to her. I'm doing that because I am married to her. And I know when I said I do, with that came some responsibilities. And I want to fulfill those responsibilities. And when you said I do to Jesus, that carries with it some responsibilities. And we want to fulfill those responsibilities. But, and let me just add to this too, that going to church doesn't make you a Christian. Don't to curse, don't, I don't like to hear the reply, and, and, and it's not a proper reply when you ask someone that, when did you put your faith in Jesus? When did you receive Christ your Savior? And the response is, I have always been that way. I've always been saved. I've always been a Christian. No one's always been a Christian. You, you have to have a time when you were born again. It's like, when's your birthday? Well, I've always been here. And you may feel like it, and I hope you don't look like it, but you, uh, you, you haven't always been here. You had a day when you came into the world, and whatever day that is, they said, this is your day. Uh, if today was the day, your birthday would be April 10th, whatever year you were born, and say, that's when you came into this world. Well, you ought to have a time, and you may not know the exact day, I understand that, but you may not know the exact hour, but you ought to know there was a time when you received Jesus Christ as your Savior. When you realized that you were a sinner in need of a Savior, and Jesus was the answer, as you heard her sing this morning. And you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. You ought to have a time when that took place. Or my friend, going to church, listen, going to church won't make you a Christian. Billy Sunday said any more than going in the garage will make you a car. All right? You, you, you have to know Christ as your Savior. Now the third part of the parable is the lost son. And that lost son is not, again... Not a loss of salvation, not a loss of relationship with his father, but he did lose his fellowship with his father. He took his inheritance, he left, and he went away, and he was apart from God. And, and uh, he, he eventually, the Bible says, and we'll look at it in a little bit, came to, his, uh, came to himself, came to his senses, and he went back home. And by the way, he, he just started home, and as he started down that road, the father came to meet him. 
And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But all three stories, all three parts of this parable, we see all three parts of the Godhead, do we not? In the first parable with the lost sheep, who's the shepherd? Jesus Christ. That is God the Son. In the second parable, we have the woman who's looking for the coin. Why? That she might use it. How, who, what part of the God that uses us in service for Him? It's the Holy Spirit of God. So we have God the Holy Spirit. He's the one, remember, who divides us to spiritual gifts, as He will, 1 Corinthians. And He's the one who uses us for the glory of God. The last parable there, last part of that parable, is the Father and the Son. Obviously, that's God the Father. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, all of them involved in our relationship and in, our, in, in seeking the lost and in using us for His glory and using us for His honor and give, bringing us back into fellowship with Him. And so there's great rejoicing in all three of these stories when the lost is found. Whenever the sheep comes back, the shepherd brings it back, he calls his friends and they rejoice that they found the lost one. And then when the coin is found, she calls her neighbors and friends together and they all rejoice and have a party that they found the lost coin. And when the son comes home, the father says, kill the fatted calf, bring everybody in, we're having a party. My son has been found, he's home. And the fellowship has been restored. There's a poem by Larry Bryant that goes like this, When the Model T first hit the street, it didn't bring all heaven to its feet. And when the first computer was born, that didn't blow old Gabriel's horn. There's only one thing that we're sure about that can make those angels jump and shout. It's when a sinner makes the Lord his choice. That's when the angels in heaven rejoice. Now heaven doesn't strike up a band for any old occasion at hand. It's got to be a special thing to make those angels smile and sing. Now when the United States became a nation, there was no angelic celebration. But when one lost sinner comes back home, they jump for joy around the throne. Amen? That's good. A lost sheep is the lost soul, but the good news is the lost can be found. If you're here today and you're lost, you don't know Christ as your Savior, the good news is He's seeking for you this morning. You may not have realized it when you walked in here. You may not have realized it when you prepared to come to church, but God knew you were coming. Jesus knew you'd be here, and He is after you this morning to bring you to Himself. The lost silver is a lost servant, but the lost can be found. If you're here today and you're saved, but you're not serving Jesus Christ, you say, someone asks you, well, what do you do for the Lord? What, how do you serve Christ? What would you say? Well, listen, my friend, you can be put into service today for the Lord. You can come back to God and say, God, use me in your service. And, of course, the lost son can be brought back into fellowship. You may be that prodigal son, that wayward son. You may be one that's run away from God this morning. But you listen to me, God knew you'd be here today, and God is in pursuit of you. God is waiting for you to come home. And all you have to do is come to your senses and say, "I listen, it's the best life in the world is, is in, under the Father's care, living for Jesus Christ. Well, let's look at these three parables briefly this morning, all right? Number one, look at the lost sheep. Look at the lost sheep. And this story shows us that God is a seeking God. All right, God is a seeking God. Isaiah 53 verse 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. All we like sheep have gone astray. And so God, God, listen, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loves all. God's not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. He is concerned about all. Most, listen, most pastors today, you notice this shepherd came and he counted. He had a hundred sheep and how many did he count that, that came past him and he could account for that night? Ninety-nine. I do not know for sure how many members are on the roll of Bible Baptist Church. I'm not sure how many are in attendance today. I'm, I'm guessing by the look of, of, of folks, I, I'm thinking probably 130 to 150, somewhere in that neighborhood today are in church. I'll guarantee you that there's more than that on the roll of the church. If a church had 150 on the roll and they had a 149 in church, most preachers would say, wow, I'm, I'm satisfied with that. 
I'm happy with that. In fact, if 150 were out of 200, they'd probably say I'm pretty happy about that. But how about somebody who has 99 out of 100 and says, no, that won't do. I'm going after the one that's lost. And listen, my friend, we have to always maintain and make sure that our emphasis is where God keeps His emphasis. Our emphasis, it's such an emphasis today to focus on the 90 and 9 and forget the lost. Hey, don't get focused on the 90 and 9. Let's focus on the lost. Where are the churches? Where are the people of God who say, listen, our mission and our goal will be to win the lost to Jesus Christ. Let's get the lost to Him. Let's go seek and save that which was lost. So He leaves the 90 and 9 in the wilderness and He goes after the one lost sheep. And He's not satisfied until He finds it. He's going after it till He finds it. He's like, how cold was it? Doesn't say. How, how, how tough was it? Doesn't say. How mountainous was it? Doesn't say. How dangerous was it? Doesn't say. Doesn't matter how dangerous it was. Doesn't matter how cold it was. Doesn't matter how hot it was. Doesn't matter what the terrain was like. I'm going after the sheep until I find it. I like that determination, don't you? Have you ever determined you want to go after souls and you want to go after the lost until you find it? Until you won't quit. You're not going to quit until you find one. That's the termination. That's what Christ does in searching for us. I tell you, other religions are all about man trying to get to God. Christianity is about God trying to get to us. Jesus is seeking us. You can, there's none that seeketh after God. The Bible says that. We're not seeking Him, but He's seeking us. All the other religions say, oh, the way to get to heaven is you have to die for your God. No, Christianity says, no, your God died for you. The Word became flesh to dwell among us and He died in our place. He loved me enough and He loved you enough to do that. Other religions are like the Tower of Babel. Man's trying to get a boost from beneath. But Jesus says what man needs is not a boost from beneath, but a new birth from above. You need to come to know Christ as your Savior. So Jesus is rejoicing and all of heaven rejoicing with Him. That's the lost sheep. And listen, my friend, if you're here this morning and you've never received Christ as your Savior, when you bow your head and you from your heart ask Jesus to be your Savior, you set off a celebration in heaven. What a, what a joyful... Hey, we rejoice here when someone gets saved. We rejoice when they get saved. You applaud and you clap and you're happy and they stand at the back and you say, praise the Lord, great decision you made today and everybody's thrilled. That doesn't compare to what takes place in heaven when someone gets saved. Why don't you make the bells of heaven ring this morning? If you don't know Christ as your Savior, receive Him as your Savior today. Now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. The second parable is the parable of the lost silver. The lost silver. The lost coin. You ever lost something important? Hmm? How, many, uh, how many ever, uh, be honest, how many ever you thought you lost your glasses and you went around looking for them and they were on your head? <laughs> Come on, yeah, okay. How many of you have been looking around for your cell phone trying to figure out where you put it and you hold it in your hand? Huh? Oh, look at that. Wow. Trying to think, where did I put that phone? And you look and say, oh, it's right there. That's a sign of something, but we won't say what it is. I can't remember what it was anyway. A dear lady, had a, she had a husband who was an airline pilot. And he often had difficulty locating things around their house. One day he was asking his wife where the salt was. She got annoyed at him and said, how on earth can you find Detroit in a blizzard at night and you can't find the salt in your own kitchen? And of course, he wisely replied to her, well, darling, they don't move Detroit. I like that. There's, there's great concern and great desperation when you're looking for something that's lost. And you're looking diligently to try to find that. And this, this coin, the woman only had ten. And one is lost and she's looking for it diligently. She's sweeping that house and obviously not floors like we have as we know. They would have dirt floors. Dusty and trying to sweep that dirt around and trying to, to, to find it to, so it can be 
uh, used by, by the lady. You know, there's only, there's only two reasons that this uh, coin would be lost, and that is obviously dirt, dust and darkness. The Bible says she had to light a light to search for. She got, it's in the dust or the darkness. And listen to me. That's what causes somebody to become unuseful to the Lord. Dust or darkness. What happens is sin comes into our life. We allow, we allow the things of the world to get us. And the Bible says in the parable of the sower, the things of the world, the cares of this world, the, the, the deceitfulness of riches, it chokes the word and it becomes unfruitful in our life. We get caught up in all the things that don't matter and we think they're so important and it chokes out that which really does matter and that what really is important and so it's it's that the spirit of God has to take his broom and and he shines the light of truth upon the corruption that's in our heart upon the the worldliness and the the the, the sin that gets into our heart and he tries to find that lost coin he finds to find that lost one that's lost to usefulness. And he says, yield yourself to me again. Yield yourself to my possession so I can use you for good and for God to do something with your life. That's the lost coin. That's the woman searching for it, trying to find it that she might be able to use it to be a help and to be a blessing and, and to be a help to someone else. The fall of the coin was, was quick. I'm sure it was just a, a sudden thing. But now it's gone. And she looks and looks and looks. And by the way, until she finds she's diligent about it as well. Looking until she finds it. Listen, can I help you with this? God's not giving up on you. God's continuing to look for you. God's continuing to, uh, to prick your heart until you yield to Him and say, okay, God, use me. Use me. Do something with my life. I want my life to count for God. I want my life to count for the Lord. And ask God to use you. The Bible says, grieve not the Spirit of God. Now you grieve the Spirit when you allow other things to influence you and you never let Him influence you. The Bible says in the book of James that the Spirit of God in us lusts to the point of envy. He desires, a lust is a strong desire. He strongly desires in us to the point of being envious. He's envious. What, is, what would the Holy Spirit be envious of? The things I allow to have control over me, and I won't give him that control. I'll make sure I get, man, come on, Pastor, aren't you going, what, what time are we getting out of church? What time's church over tonight? I got something I got to see on TV. What time is this over? The game starts at this time. And we get so many things we get caught up in to control us. And the Spirit of God says, I wish I could have that kind of control over you. I wish you would yield to me that way. And we grieve the Spirit of God. Understand, God doesn't get angry. You have Some of you in this room today, you have grown children. They're, they're, they're in their 20s or 30s or whatever. And listen, when they don't do what God wants as a parent... You don't get angry. You get grieved. You get grieved and it burdens your heart. It's not mad. It's not angry. Hey, even the, we'll come to it in the third parable here with the lost son. The, 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 the father wasn't angry. He was grieved. He missed, he was, that the son was missing out on all that God had for him. All that he could have enjoyed. And, and let's talk about that lost son. And, and by the way, the, 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 the young guy said, give me my inheritance. Give me what's mine. And he took it. And by the way, he's not the oldest. He's the youngest. He gets an inheritance, not as much as the older one does. But he thought he was ready to go and get out on his own. Now, you know the rest of the story. Was he ready? Okay. Listen to me, teenagers. Listen to me, teenagers back there. You think you're ready to go out on your own. You're not ready. Think you're ready to handle it all by if you think you're ready to handle it all by yourself, you're not ready. And you listen to your mom and dad. They 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 still know more than you do. 
You'd be wise to listen to their advice and listen to their counsel. If you say, well, I'm about ready to go out on my own, and man, I'm, I tell you what, be honest with you, I'm scared. I'm not sure what I do. I'm going to talk to mom and dad and say, oh, help me, tell me what I should do about this. You know what? You're probably ready. You know why? Because you don't think you're ready. You think you're ready. This prodigal did too. And boy, he had money. And boy, when he had money, he had all kinds of friends. Hey, let's party with so-and-so tonight, man. Jacob's free. He's not at home anymore. Doesn't have to have those rules. Nobody tell him when to come in and where he's going and who he's with. Hey, party with Jake tonight, baby. And they go and have a good time. And, and pretty soon, guess what? The money ran out. And then, you know what? He made phone calls. And he said, hey, uh, I need a little help here. I'm a little short. Oh, sorry, man. Can't help you. No man gave to him. Boy, those are great friends, aren't they? See, when you, you don't, what he found out was they were friends to what he had. They weren't friends to him. They just moved on to the next person that has some money and has some uh, means to be able to go out and live it up. And what he did, he came to his senses. You know what he did, teenager, when he came to his senses? He realized, I, got a, I had it pretty good back at home. I guess dad knew what he was talking about. And he came back home. Prodigal, which they call him the prodigal son, it means wasteful. And he wasted his substance. He realized the best, listen, the best the world had to offer wasn't anything compared to what his father offered him at home. You think, oh, the world's got everything out there for me and my mom and dad, they don't want me to have any fun. They don't want me to get out and enjoy all this world has to offer. You go ahead, you take the world if you want, but buddy, it'll eat you up and chew you up and spit you out and leave you for dead. And you'll, you'll be caught on the phone saying, Mama, Daddy, help me. Help me. Because they love you and they care about you, they'll help you. But you ought to come to your senses. When the Jewish boy was working at the pig farm, he realized that they got it better back at home. I had it better at my father's house. I need to go back to him. I've sinned against heaven and against him. And I need to come back. The Bible says good understanding gives favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. The way of those who want to go against God is a hard way to go. I'll guarantee it. He decides, verse number 18, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe. Put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Notice he forgave him of everything. You come back to God, my friend. You're away from God this morning. Oh, you're, 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 you're saved. He is your Father, but you have no fellowship with Him and you know it because of the way you're living. You come back to Him and He forgives you. If, you confess our, if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He cleanses you from all unrighteousness. He put a robe on Him. The robe covers all. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. He put a ring on His finger to confirm His sonship. He put shoes on His feet. Didn't even have any shoes to wear now. He'd been out there, and I'm, I'll guarantee you this, He left home with shoes. He didn't have any now. Feet dirty and feet blistered probably from walking. 
Now he gets shoes put on his feet. And he kills the fatted calf. Not, not the swine. He went from the swine to the fatted calf. Because he came back to the Father. And now his hunger's quenched. His want is satisfied. He's at the Father's house. What a, what a great thing. And listen, you, you always, what the devil likes you to think is I'm so far away from God. I've gone so far the other way. It just seems so far to get back to where I was. I, I just can't get back there anymore. Oh, my friend, you just have to take the first step. And what you find out is God, the Father, is running for you the other way. And He'll meet you. It's not near as far as what you think it is. Not near as far as what the devil wants you to believe it is. You come back to Him, He's waiting for you. Robert Bruce was king of Scotland during the 12th and 13th century. He'd been at war with the king of England. And the king of England sent an army to Robert Bruce's palace to kill him. Robert Bruce was suspecting what might happen and he left his home and fled into the forest. When the army got to the palace and found their enemy was not there, they got Robert Bruce's own dogs and set them on his trail. Robert Bruce could hear the barking dogs and realize they were his own hounds. He ran and he ran. And as he did, he grew weaker and weaker and he could hear the dogs getting closer and closer. Finally, he came to a crystal clear river in the middle of the forest. He got into that brook and he waded down the stream for about two miles. And afterward, he climbed out onto the bank of the river and sat under a clump of trees. He could hear those dogs upstream barking in confusion. Not sure what happened to their master. And Robert Bruce realized he'd escaped. Now the moral of that story is simply this. If the hounds of your past are after you and they're closing in on your trail and you don't know what to do, let me tell you about a river. It's not a river of water. It's a river of blood. And it's the blood of Jesus Christ. And when you, when you sinners plunge beneath that flow, lose all their dirty stains. It, listen, praise the Lord for full salvation. God still lives upon His throne. And I know the blood still reaches deeper than the stain has gone. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. And He'll cleanse you from your sin today. I said three parables, but I don't want to neglect someone else in this story. It's the very end of the parable. Verse 25, it says, Now his elder son, all right, the oldest son, this boy's older brother, he was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother has come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid, and I might, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again and, is, and was lost and is found. You see, while that younger son was away and out of fellowship in the pigsty, the older son was lost and out of fellowship at home. He was right in the father's house. But he was carnal. He was self-righteous. He, he was self-centered, thinking only about himself. And, and listen, the first, the first to point out the prodigal sin wasn't the father. It was his brother. He was focused 
on the sin of his little brother instead of the mercy and the forgiveness and the cleansing of the Father. How sad. It's always, listen, if you're a Christian and you start gossiping about another Christian who's been forgiven, who God has extended mercy to, you're just showing yourself to be a carnal Christian. You're showing yourself to be a Pharisee. The elder brother is a, really a picture of a carnal church, church member. Someone who's in the church, but he's, he's Pharisaical, looking down on other people. What you need to say, no matter who it is, there but by the grace of God go I. And give God the glory. And give God, give God what, what, what He rightfully deserves as He forgives. Because one day, hey, mark it down. One day, you need that forgiveness too. You're going to need that mercy as well. If you're here today and you're lost, let God bring you into the fold. Let the shepherd bring you into the fold, will you? If you're here today and you're, you're lost in the house, you say, Pastor, I'm coming to church, but I'm not doing anything for God. I'm lost to the usefulness of the Holy Spirit. Why don't you bow your knee and say, Spirit of God, use me. Use me. Use me to accomplish what you want to accomplish with my life. If you're here today and you're out of fellowship with God, you're the prodigal son. Or you're the, you're the other older brother. You've had a carnal attitude. You've had a look down your nose attitude at people who've been forgiven. You need to come and ask God to have mercy on your soul and ask Him to help you to welcome home the ones who go away from God. The lost and the found. There's great rejoicing in every case. May God help us to have this Spirit in each one of our lives. Let's pray, shall we? Father, we bow before you in prayer this morning now. Thank you, Lord, for these wonderful, this wonderful parable and the different parts of it here in Luke 15. And Father, this morning we've looked at these parables afresh and anew. And Lord, I'm asking you that you'll speak to the hearts of people this morning as only you can. Now, Lord, I'm asking you this morning that if any in this room are the lost sheep, they realize and they understand that they've never had a time in their life when they asked Christ to forgive their sin and to be their Savior. Lord, I know that you're speaking to their heart this morning. May they open the door and allow Christ to come in. Then, Lord, there's folks in this room this morning that are lost to service for you. They've allowed the dust and the corruption. They've allowed the things of this world and just the sinfulness of the world that can so easily overtake us. And it's choked out the word of their life, from their life, and they know they're not being used by you. May they yield themselves today and say, God, use me in service for you. Lord, someone here today, and they're the prodigal son. They've, they've gone the way of the world. They've gone out thinking I, the, the, the world, what the world's offering is better than what I've got here at home. And Lord, they're realizing, and I pray you'd help them come to their senses, come to themselves as the prodigal did. Realize that the best life is living for God. The best life is a life lived under your direction, doing what you have saved us here to do. Lord, help those in the room that might be the older brother. Been critical and been judgmental of people who have come back to God after being away from Him. God, forgive them and may they seek to have a tender heart. May we all seek and save that which was lost. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I'll finish the prayer in just a moment. I wonder how many folks here this morning that say, Pastor, there's a time when I know I was that lost sheep. And I wandered from God and I was lost and Jesus came looking for me. 
And there's a time when He found me. And He put me on His shoulders. And I know that that's where I am this morning. I know that if I died, I'd go to heaven. Jesus is my Savior. Would you slip your hand up for a moment that I may see it? Say, Pastor, that's me. I know that I'm saved. Okay, you may put them down. You're here this morning and say, Pastor, I don't know that for sure. I couldn't tell you any time in my life when I knew that I was a sinner and Jesus was the Savior I needed and I called out to Him to save me from my sin. Pastor, pray for me today. I'm not sure I'm saved. Not embarrass you, I'll not come to you, but I will pray for you. Would you just slip your hand up and put it back down this morning and say, Pastor, pray for me. Say, pray for me this morning. I couldn't raise it the first time, but I'll raise it this time. I see your hand, young lady. Thank you. Anyone else today join this one? Say, Pastor, pray for me. Now, I wonder how many today would say, Pastor, I I think I'm one of those other ones. I'm either lost to service. I've allowed some things in my life that I know is choking the word out of my life. I'm, I'm not in service for the Lord. The Holy Spirit is not able to use me as He desires. I know that. The Lord's speaking to your heart about it this morning. If you're here today and maybe you're the prodigal son, maybe you'd say, I'm away from God. My friend, come home today. Come back to the Father today. He'll meet you with open arms. He'll he'll hug you. He'll kiss your neck. And the angels in heaven will rejoice. I wonder how many folks today would say, Preacher, maybe you're the, maybe, hey, maybe you're the older son and maybe you've been a little judgmental on people and you've been been harsh and you saw yourself in that older son. You'd ask God to forgive you for that today. Why don't you slip your hand up and say, Pastor, pray for me today. God has spoken to my heart. Yes, yes. Amen, amen. Thank you. You may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray. We'll have our invitation. God has spoken to your heart. Now you need to respond to Him. You know, when, when He spoke to the prodigal's heart in that pigsty, He arose and went to His Father. I'm going to pray in just a minute. When I'm done praying, we'll stand to our feet. When we stand to our feet, the pianist will begin to play. And as soon as she begins to play, run to the Father. Come home to Him. If you've never received Christ your Savior, come. Let someone take a Bible and show you how you can know you're on your way to heaven. But do what God's telling you to do this morning. It would be the happiest day of your life. Heavenly Father, bless this invitation. Thank you for speaking to hearts this morning. May your will be done now in the hearts and lives of people. May no one resist. May no one hold back. Oh God, may they come to you today. May they know you're waiting to receive them. Your arms are open. You're waiting to forgive. And you can cleanse them from all unrighteousness. Father, have your way in every heart. And I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, the pianist will play. As Lisa begins to play, God has spoken to your heart. Come this morning. Come right now. That's right. That's right. Amen. for you to come and pray with others who are praying here at the altar God has dealt with your heart don't don't resist don't go another day away from him come to him
She'll play one more verse. You can still come this morning. Always seems long when there's a decision to make and you're not making it. Respond to the Lord this morning. Father, we thank you now for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for decisions being made for you today. Thank you for being a kind and a loving and forgiving Heavenly Father. Oh, to be like thee. I pray, Lord, that we would go this from this place, Lord, and we would be conscious of the lost around us. Not only the lost sheep, but those who are lost in service for you, that we can encourage them to let God use them with their life. And then those out of fellowship with God, their way, their prodigals, oh, may we encourage them to come back to the Father. And Lord, help us to not ever become like the, product, like the son who stayed home, the older brother, become so self-centered and looking only at ourselves and pointing out the sins of others and never seeing the wrong in our own lives. Deliver us from that. We love you. We thank you for our time in your word together this morning. Lord, thank you for being our God. We're thankful that we are your people. Dismiss us now with your care. Make us mindful, Lord. You go with us. Give us a good afternoon. And then, Lord, I pray you'll bring us back this evening for our evening service. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Join tears with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm a part of the family, the family of God. God bless you. You're dismissed.